Hey, what's up, Reefers? So I've spent the last few days playing with the uh, aquascape of the 17-gallon drop-off tank uh, from Arfoli Acrylic, and I'm in, finally I finally have something that I'm pretty happy about that I want to share with you guys. So let me do a quick walk around first, and then I'll explain some of the design decisions. All right, so. Let me move back a little bit just so that you know where the tank is situated uh, because that is important. So the tank is in my living room. Here's my 45 gallon tank. On the other side of the sofa is the 17 gallon drop off tank. So there are primarily three viewing angles. Uh, number one, people will be sitting on the couch and they'll look to the left and they'll see this. All right. so from this angle, I want them to see a reef crest. I want, to see, I want them to see an overhang and as I get up and walk around, here's is like a straight on view. And then you have a little step up to the dining area, my really messy dining area. And then you look at the tank from a more top down angle. So it'd be like this. So my goal for this aquascape is to make sure that the tank is presentable from all three sides from different height and I want to play to the strength of each height. So for example, like we're up here, uh, if we look from above the tank, you see that the rockscape is not really like a straight line, like boom, boom, it's kind of like a curve like this, just so that there's like a foreground and background, uh, regardless of wherever you look at the tank from. And another, another position that I spent a lot of time working with is uh, from the couch. You notice that the IKEA shelf has empty like holes like this, right? And on the tank, there's a hole. I tried to line them up. So I figured it would be kind of cool if I build in an arch, that kind of like, you know, progression. It's like bum, 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 right? To lead the eyes up here. And if you remember from my earlier video, when I was telling you my plan on how to escape this tank, my orig original plan was to have this rock come straight down, well not straight down, but come out a little bit and then come back down here uh, in order to, but not touch the bottom, in order to kind of lengthen the rockscape here. Uh, and I figure it would be a different look for a drop off tank too. But unfortunately, I thought about it a little bit more. I was like, okay, if I have a vertical rock work, that will really limit to the amount of corals I can keep, simply because the ones at the top will shape the ones at the bottom. So I kind of changed the plan up a little bit um, and I found I found a couple pieces of rock that work really well together. So I built out a overhang or a reef crest. Like it'll crest out and then it'll be just nothing down here. And that is exactly what we have here. So I was really lucky to find a rock that kind of works as the keystone. It locks into the sand trap nicely. And I was able to epoxy, well, first of all, this rock was able to lock into this rock, but I also epoxy it to reinforce the, um, the connection to make sure nothing, <laughs> nothing like crashes. So I was able to build a little overhang um, and I, I really like this look. Uh, one of the reasons I also like it is because I studied a lot of um, drop off tank, uh, at least the pictures I can find. And a lot of the escape seems to be uh, coming all the way from top here and go all the way to the bottom. They may have one or two columns of rock coming down uh, to give the illusion of a reef cliff, I guess. But at the same time, as soon as the rock touch the bottom, it kind of breaks the illusion because you're like, oh, okay, all right, now there's an ending, right? So with this layout or this, um, this aquascaping, I kind of want to not have the rock, number one, reach the bottom, and number two, by it just kind of like jettisoning it out, it's almost like, okay, maybe if you, if the light is uh, dim enough, if the room is dark enough, I want it to feel like, oh, this is just like a big drop, much deeper than here. So I'm really happy with the final aquascaping um, layout that I have currently. And I kept, I kept mindful, I kept reminding myself to don't use too much rock, don't use too much rock, because when the tank is empty, uh, it's really tempted just kind of add, keep adding rocks so that there's something, fill out all the gaps, right? Fill out all the empty space. But I keep reminding myself that as I start buying corals, usually they'll come on rocks as well. And some of those rocks may go really nicely with the scape. So I just want to keep enough room for future expansions. I also want to also try hard have to have enough surface that's facing light so nothing is being shaded. This will increase the number 
of corals that I can keep down the road and it will create the illusion of depth of course. And one thing that I really want to try on this tank is also to um, add some LPS, maybe Frog Spawn because that's one of my favorite coral that will kind of extend down a little bit and kind of point up so it's kind of uh -uh, like that so it would be kind of weird we'll see if I can find something like that so to fill that tiny little space right there but not so close to the bottom where that the lead people's eyes to, the, to see the bottom so I think it'll be a pretty interesting look now some, some of you may be like hey you're wasting all these base down here you know why don't you just like you know add something down here too um, so in design we really learn to appreciate negative space. Uh, negative space is basically space that has nothing going on. For example, the padding around text. You know, sometimes uh, some websites have a lot of padding around text. But that, what that does is that, that draw attention to the contents, in this case, the rock work. So by having all these negative space here, here, right, and uh, not so much there, but this part, especially down here, it'll really draw your attention to this. And I'm hoping to create that illusion that, okay, oh, this is actually much deeper than it is. Um, so negative space is not a bad thing. And with this aquascape, uh, like I mentioned in previous video, I really want to go with the minimalist look, right? Just minimal amount of rock. And just play to the strength of the drop-off. Not in the traditional sense where you use all the vertical room. Because if you just need vertical room, a regular tank will be able to do that as well. You can just stack rocks up on one side and uh, then you get all the vertical room you want. But it's more to the sense that it gives the illusion of a much deeper drop. So that is where I am at the moment. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, there were some challenges along the way. The, <laughs> the biggest challenge was attaching this rock to this piece. So the keystone is excellent. It locks right in place, looks fantastic, but I want to extend it out a little bit. So let's see if we can see this. So I actually added some epoxy, number one, between the two rocks, and number two, I added some epoxy right there and right there. Now I'm not holding this rock down with these epoxy. It's more, I put them in, uh, fill up the gap where that, if that rock tried to lift, once these epoxy harden, it kind of takes up that room. So it kind of locks this rock in further. So again, it's not gluing two rocks together. It's more like taking the room so that this rock cannot float up because these are pressing it down. It's wedged in between the two rocks. And I try to blend it in a little bit better uh, so that it's not all artificial looking um, because I made that mistake in my 45 gallon tank and I every time I look at it, it's an eyesore. So these, I try to blend it in a little bit better, spend a little bit more time on it. So that's, uh, I think that's one part that I spent a lot of time on. Another challenge I had was that I did not realize how slippery acrylic is uh, with the rocks on there. Like these rocks slide around really easily. Uh, so I am debating whether I want to epoxy this base rock down uh, just a little bit so that it does not move around or I may just use black sand on the top level of this drop off tank and I'll leave the bottom, uh, bare bottom, just so that uh, once I, I feel like once I put sand in there then it looks like oh, okay the eyes will see something then that ends. So I want to try to keep that bare bottom. And I think it would be easier to clean down there simply because there's nothing sitting on the base versus here. So I may just add up, end up using black sand uh, to kind of stabilize that base rock so it does not slide around. And as well as to make maintenance a little bit easier. And as you can see, I already scratched it a little bit um, on the black, black uh, the black base acrylic. I don't even know where that happened or how that happened. See that little scratch right there? So yeah. So this is where I am right now. I think um, aquascaping is good. I, I will call it done uh, as soon as I was able to, as soon as I'm able to lock down the base rock. So I may need to go order some black sand or order some epoxy, uh, more epoxy, because I just finished mine up um, and just lock the base rock down. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna start adding our DI water in there and cycle the tank. Um, so, <clears throat> I think aquascaping, I have a really love-hate relationship with it. Uh, in the past, in the past, I'm uh, a lot more indecisive in terms of when it comes to design. So I always struggle with aquascape. And I also used to aquascape with live rocks. I used to use live rock and I had to do it in the water. And it's just really frustrating. 
So ever since I switched over to using dry rocks, and I guess like um, as I grew as a designer, I'm a UI UX designer, um, I learned a lot. Uh, I started learning a lot more of what works and what does not work in terms of design. I tried to apply it to everyday life, and that actually helps. It does, the skill does translate. And nowadays, I think the biggest thing I gain is that I can see. I can tell good design from bad design, and this helps me drive decision. Uh, in the past, I was like, oh, I don't know if it looks good, and I tried to ask for opinions. But now I can look at it and can confidently say that, oh, this sucks. Or like, oh, I like this. That's cool. Let's go with it. So I think that really helps. I for design, right? So I think aquascaping is good. At least I'm happy with it. And I'm going to... SN or a proxy, and then we'll fill the tank and we'll cycle the tank. And I think, in terms of what excites me the most when setting up a tank, I think that's actually that's a point. Like uh, I, I love seeing tank cycling, and when it's first getting ready for corals, I love that spot. Uh, for aquascaping, I mean I love it, but at the same time it's pain to ass too. So I'm really glad this part is over. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy to share this finished progress with you guys. If you guys have any feedback, let me know. Um, this is a, again, this is like a love-hate <laughs> portion of setting up a reef tank for me. So, all right, guys, hope you guys have a good weekend. I will talk to you later.